Section Eleven will discuss a few must-knowns of gate driver for soft switching ZVS converters. The reverse recovery discussed in previous section is really a headache for optimizing the system efficiency and the reliability. To further eliminate this issue, soft switching is the way to go, like the critical mode totem pole PFC and the LC converters. They all turn on the device after the VDS voltage voltage decreases to zero. With soft switching, the previously mentioned three stage is now only one stage. There is no Miller charge. Turning on the device when the COSS is fully discharged and the device channel current is decided by external circuit, not parasitics. Generally, the DIDT is very slow compared with hard switching, so there is no overlap, there is no turn on loss. And the gate driver loss mechanism is also changed. For hard switching, assuming the gate driver voltage is 10 volts, the shaded area on and off area, the total loss is the total loss dissipated in the gate driver circuit. The total energy per cycle is the total area QG multiplied by 10 volts VGS. For soft switching, and there's no Miller charge, the solid red line represents the turn on trajectory and turning off is similar to the hard switching. Compared with hard switching gate driver losses, the loss in for soft switching is smaller. Soft switching solves the turn on loss. However, the turn off is still hard switching. Like the critical mode current conduction, the turn off current is being doubled. The switching loss will surely increase if driving the FED with weak driver. I mean the lower sync current capability driver. With strong gate driver, you will hardly see the Miller plateau area and the overlap period is minimized. Importantly, the switching behavior is not controlled by the gate current but by the COSS and the load current. Considering the highly nonlinear capacitance, the piecewise linear switching waveform is showing in the upper right. Very slow DVDT at the initial stage because the cap and low voltage is very large, which is 6 nanofarad and 0 volts, and followed with very high DVDT and high voltage, leading to further minimized overlapped area. Here is an experiment example for turning off super junction MOSFETs. Zooming in the waveform shows that the gate driver is very clean with very little Miller plateau time. The VDS is increasing very slowly and early turning off. See the scale is only 5 volts per deviation. Then ramping up. All the switching voltage and current changes after BGS is fully turned off, which means the switching behavior is not controlled by gate driver but by COSS and load current. Even though the overlapped area with strong gate driver is minimized, it is still there. If we measure it, it is, we, we will surely see the overlap. However, is it the real loss? Let's take a look at the turn off mechanism of popular LLC circuit, considering each device consists of a channel, body down, and a CDS. Stage number one bottom fat is on, current flows through the channel. Stage two channel is turning off and with decreasing channel current. Remaining current charging and discharging the COSS of the two switches. Load current during the switching transition keeps the same because of the relatively large inductive load. Stage 3, channel is off. All the load current is used to continue charge and discharge the COSS. Final stage, ZVS is achieved and the current is flown through the body downloads. The really loss is only happening at stage 2 where there is overlap between the channel current and voltage. Stage 3 is just charging and discharging the COSS. As we may know, all of the COSS energy will be recovered in the next cycle during soft switching. It is good to have smaller loss and turning off. However, the DVDT and DIDT is dependent on load and can generate high DVDT and DIDT and very heavy load. 